Today we're going to be looking at these two Eclair, or is it Eclair, monitors. We've got the 24-inch monitor and 27-inch monitor. You're probably saying, oh, what's so special about these? We've seen monitors, blah, blah, blah. These are USB Type-C connectivity, which means you can connect them up to something like a smartphone or tablet, as long as it's using Android 10 desktop mode. And you can actually, well, turn your mobile phone or tablet into a desktop PC. You can then connect up your keyboard and mouse to it and work it just like it was a desktop PC and run all your apps and everything on a full 24 or 27 inch screen. Okay, so both monitors, the 24 inch and the 27 inch, the contents inside the boxes are pretty much the same with probably two exceptions. One is the monitor is obviously bigger and the power cable so in the one the 24 inch it comes with a power brick which is built into the plug the 27 inch comes with a separate brick which then plugs into another power cable so it's otherwise that's pretty much it it's just obviously that 27 inch one needs slightly more power and one of these can't handle it otherwise the stand is identical they've got manuals which are pretty much uh, similar and they've come with a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable. There is no HDMI cables or anything like that. And as you can see, every single thing has got a plastic bag around it, which obviously Greta isn't going to be too pleased about. Okay, assembly is very easy. It's basically two parts, a screen itself as well as the stand. You will need a Phillips head screwdriver, sort of a medium or largest one to be able to do this, but it's just basically one screw. So what you want to do is leave this piece of plastic on the screen to protect it, put it face down on a clean table, which has got obviously no screws or anything sticking up because you don't want to damage the screen because obviously that's going to be easy to do. Hang it over the edge of the table or at least where the base is so you can easily access it. You get the actual base part here, which you can see has got three rubber parts there to stop it slipping and hopefully dampen some noise as well as a bit of rubber there as well. But basically there's a screw built into this bit. You just take that out with your Phillips screwdriver. Once you've taken that screw out, you basically push the base into a little hole on the edge and those hole, the hole in the base will match up there. Then you get your screw and screw it in. It's simple as that. So that is basically the screen constructed obviously you can wall mount it if you wish we'll go into that in a few minutes though but that's it okay so this is what the screen looks like when it's constructed the 27 inch and the 24 inch look identical with obviously the exception of the physical size of them the front you can see it is a frameless design on the top and the two sides the bottom does have a bit of a border that border is sort of i would say a gunmetal gray is probably the best way of putting it but when they say frameless it pretty much is that's around about a millimeter around the edge for the actual frame so they've got their branding on the front and then you've got the base now the first thing i've noticed on both of these is it seems to be balancing on the back corner and on this corner of the screen this bit is actually slightly off the table and if you knock it it wobbles and this side just basically bounces off the table the 27 inch model you can probably hear is even worse it does make a bit of a rattling noise uh, where it's uh, slapping against the table they either need to put more rubber rubber on the base to stop it doing that or they need to completely rethink of how that base is actually working because it does seem to be pushing the weight to the center and to the right hand side of the screen rather than on the left but moving on from that if we turn the screen round and have a look at the back again they're both the same other than size You've got their branding at the top. You've also got the mounting here. So you've got your wall mount there. So you can basically screw that into a monitor stand or a wall or whatever you want to. You've got your four controls here, including power on, left, right, auto menu and stuff like that. Pretty standard stuff you get on a screen. The screen is tiltable, so you can actually see there. You can tilt it, but you can't hire it or swivel it or anything along that lines. Now on the panel here, so as you can see here, this is where your power cable will go in. So obviously to power, you've got an audio socket there for audio pass-through. 
Uh, you've also got two USB ports. We'll come to that more in a few seconds. You've got HDMI, so you can connect it up to a laptop or a desktop PC or something along that lines. Anything with a HDMI, basically. And you've also got USB Type-C. Now, that USB Type-C will actually allow you, if you've got an Android device, which has got uh, Android 10 and it's got desktop mode and, uh, enabled on it, will it let you share the information onto the screen. So you can basically increase the size of your mobile phone or tablet screen by plugging it into the USB-C socket, which is pretty good. But not only that, it will also charge your mobile phone or tablet at the same time while it's sending the picture to the monitor. So it does two things in once. Then you could hook up a keyboard and mouse or external storage, like a USB pen or something like that. And you're able to access your storage on your mobile phone of a USB pen, for example, um, using a keyboard and mouse. So you're basically turning your little smartphone into a desktop computer by just attaching it to this. But bear in mind, it only supports USB type C and Android 10 and above. So if you've got an iPhone, unfortunately, or at least at this time, it does not support it because obviously iPhones do not work on USB type C. As you can see, both screens look pretty good. On the left screen, we've got the Android desktop view using the Flow software or app. And on the right, we're just playing a HD video or a 4K video, but it's only a HD screen. So it's coming as HD from YouTube, just to give you a rough idea. Now, the colors are very vibrant. There doesn't seem to be any wishy-washiness where some screens can look a little bit too more blue-tinted or even red-tinted. And green tinted, this seems that the colors seem to be spot on. So the picture quality is actually very good for HD screens. And in all honesty, looking at it, sometimes it looks better quality than HD, which is really good. The biggest issue I've got with these screens, though, is unfortunately the base. The 24 inch one is not as bad, but the 27 one inch is really bad. For example, if I just press down on it here, you can hear it's clanking against the table. It's where it's wobbling. If I do it a few times, you can see the screen wobbling quite a bit. And if I knock the screen, you can see it bouncing. It's working a bit like a spring, where it's springing it back and forth, which isn't really good. I would like to see a slightly different stand or a re reworked stand, because it does look nice. It looks quite unique. But it's, I don't know, there's just something not right about it. I think it's just the way it is distributing the weight onto that back central part of the stand and the right-hand side. It's sort of causing this bit to rise slightly, which is then causing it to be a little bit uneven and it causes it to wobble, which is a bit of a shame because that's the biggest issue. Now, viewing angles, I'll just turn the screen for you. Bear in mind, when you're looking at these screens, you are looking at screens, which are then being recorded onto a camera uploaded onto YouTube, and then you're watching them on a different screen. So the quality isn't going to look exactly the same, but it gives you a rough idea. So the viewing angles, as you can see here, are very good. There isn't any issues viewing it from different angles. You will find it does go slightly hazy, though, when you get it sort of get closer to the side, which is pretty normal for most screens, but it is quite easy to see. If you're sitting at a normal angle, you've got two or three people around the screen, you're not going to have an issue seeing what's on the screen. There is a menu on the back as well as an auto button. So the auto button will actually let you change between the HDMI or Type-C, that's a USB Type-C connection. So if you've got obviously the screen connected up to your PC and your phone at the same time, you can actually flick between the two with ease. There is also another button on the back for the menu, which will then let you go through different options, for example, brightness, contrast, DCR override HDR mode, which is on this model. It's not on the 24 inch model HDR. Um, so I'm not sure uh, why that's not been mentioned on any of the paperwork that I've seen anyway. Uh, but you have got the ability there uh, if you want to turn that on. If it's true HDR or anything like that is another question. Um, you've got color temps you can do, you've got standard user mode, text sports, all this different stuff on there. You can adjust the menus. It even lets you adjust the volume, but there's no speakers on it. I don't know about that one. I think it's just whether you're using the same software built into the screens as others, or at least if there is speakers in there, I'm not hearing anything coming out of them. Let's put it that way. Uh, but otherwise, the screens are very good quality, and being able to have that option of 
connecting up USB type C or HDMI is pretty good. So you can basically turn a phone or a tablet into near enough a full working desktop PC uh, and even attach storage, keyboards, mice and stuff like that to it to make it a full functioning desktop computer or a large laptop or however you would like to put it. Uh, it gives you all the functionality there, obviously with the limitations of the software built into your phone. So otherwise, I can't do anything but recommend these. But as I said, I would have probably rated them a little bit better if they sort that base out. I hope you enjoyed that review. If you did, why not check out some other monitors we've reviewed in the past by clicking on this box just here. Otherwise, don't forget to like, subscribe, give us a comment below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.